Hello and welcome to Color Multimedia Enterprises. My name is Luke, also known as Tianery, and we are going to be taking a look at another Hakes and Nika web tutorial. Initially, I started a tutorial on Linux because in the previous tutorial I said I was going to start using Linux. Unfortunately, I ended up with a lot of problems with my SQL not um, connecting properly. I tried for several hours to try and find a solution as to why I couldn't connect to MySQL, reinstalling it, rebooting, etc, etc, and it just wouldn't work. So I have decided against creating a tutorial on Linux and I do apologize for those of you who were potentially excited by that. Um, I can understand why you might be. Uh, but unfortunately, due to the issues, I did not go ahead and do it. Now, in this particular tutorial, what I will be doing is... <laughs> um, so, in this particular tutorial, we are going to take a look at connecting to an SQL server. It's quite easy and simple to do. So, in order to connect to an SQL server, we need to, <clears throat> of course, be able to know what our database is and many other things. So, what I'm going to do is, in this server, I am going to create a new database. And I am going to call it tutorial. Okay. Um, I'm not going to create any tables here um, because I'm going to be creating a table in code, which you can do, which you can do, of course. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to initialize a variable, and this variable is going to get a thing called my SQL dot connect, and this returns a variable that identifies whether or not you are able to connect or not, um, or connection information rather, I should really be saying. Um, so there are a few things that this connection inf info needs. It needs a host, so I'm going to just put in local host here. It needs a port, you can leave this null and it will default to 3306, um, which is the default for MySQL. There is also the database. Um, so in this case, it's tutorial. We also need a user, which is the username and the pass, which is the password for it. And there's also a socket, depends on if you use a socket file. Um, on Linux, you would probably um, put in the socket uh, file where the socket is. Uh, sockets are basically files that is a configuration file that identifies the connection information of a MySQL. Um, that's only if you're testing things locally, it only works locally. Um, and then what we need to do is identify in the manager what that connection information is. So we do that. And now we can actually create a table. So what I'm going to do is create a, another static function and I am going to initialize. And in this function, I am going to say if sys.db.manager Wait, no, sorry, that's not manager, it's table create. So in table create, there's a few methods in which we can identify whether or not a table exists or whether we can create a table, etc. So what I'm going to do is just pass in user.manager. And if it doesn't exist, then we are going to create it. 
there is a very simple method for that. It is just called user create. Now the user dot manager thing is a static uh, method, and oops. and that is going to be based on uh, user, which is going to be a class that we're going to create, which extends a system DB object. So what I'm going to do is create a new hex class I'm going to import sys.db.types that's what we're going to need and I'm going to of course call it user which extends sys.db.object like that oops and not be doing that why is it doing this for really don't know there we go right so in here we have a collection of fields the first one is an ID now there's a variety of different uh, types that you can use the SID type allows you to specify that it is an auto increment integer variable which is what the, that is going to be. It's also automatically going to be assigned the primary key as well for this particular table when it when it's created. Um, all right, so I do apologize for that uh, pause just then. So as I, as I was saying, the public var ID is the unique identifier, which I of course mentioned. The public var name, that is going to be an S string. So this is another one of the types that you can use. This can um, be followed by a limit of characters. That's essentially what this is doing. Um, you can omit that and it will um, be default. I believe it defaults to just text, although I'm not 100% sure, but when you do it with a string and 32, that will translate to a var car. And I'll do the same for passwords as well. It's going to be a string 32, like that. And what I'm also going to do is provide a meta tag here, which is going to be table, which will rename the table uh, to users as I want. So if we go then back to here, when we call this initialize, which I actually spelled incorrectly, <laughs> um, it'll check to see if the table exists. If it doesn't, we'll, it, we will create it. And the manager is a static field on user. So object has a static field called manager and it uses reflection to identify the types in that particular class and it generates the table and it allows us to search it as i mentioned earlier so without further ado let us get started and build the application don't need that anymore because we're not using resources no that's not what i meant uh do, 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 do. what am i looking for I'll just copy. I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. <laughs> Show and explore, right. So what I'm gonna do is open command prompt, and dot that, build it. Everything should be fine, yep. Then what we'll do is Nico tools server. I'll open it, hello there, Tianary. So that obviously identifies that we were able to connect. If we go back to Heidi SQL and refresh, if I can even find the refresh button, we have a table called users. And if we go into that, we will see an ID, which is an auto increment integer, and a var car, which is of a length 32 and 32 for each of them. So that was a very simple tutorial on database connections. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.